Coming up, we spend the day in the life of an Okavango leopard, explore a cave in Indonesia, and meet a couple of charismatic crustaceans in the Seychelles. morning call of a, of a small flock of ground hornbills is unmistakable in the African bush. It's a deep booming and, and resonating noise that is so iconic to the bush felt. It's, a, it's an amazing sound. The colouring of these ground hornbills is so dramatic. The pitch black with the pure white primary wing feathers and the, and the red facial skin make them so distinctive. They eventually all take off and land next to one of the newly filled floodplains to feed for the day. They peck busily at the, at the softened ground searching for any morsels to eat. These birds will eat anything from snails and insects way up to to fairly large snakes. Further up the floodplain we come across a young male leopard resting up in a jackalberry tree. It's great to see this young leopard again. We haven't seen him for quite some time and had feared that he'd been pushed out of the area completely by the by the dominant old male. He's growing significantly and is looking to turn into a formidable animal. It won't be long before he starts challenging the old male in the area for, for breeding rights over the females here. Suddenly, as leopards tend to do, he rouses himself and makes his way down out of the tree and into the long grass. He immediately disappears and we manage to keep track of him by the frantic squawking of, of the Franklins along the way. These red bulled and Swainson's Franklins are always good indicators of where the predators are as they alarm call wildly at the, at the slightest disturbance. The young leopard makes his way into the, into the far edge of the tree line and settles down to rest in the, in the shade of some low scrub. Immediately his position is located and advertised to, to all parties by a whole flock of glossy starlings and, and go-away birds. They really do make quite a racket when there's a, a predator around. Later on in the morning a small herd of impala start approaching pretty close to where he's lying. They have no idea that he's there and either he doesn't hear them or couldn't be bothered because he depth shows absolutely no interest in them. At the same time a small breeding herd of elephants makes its way down. Elephants pass by the impala and head off down to the water's edge to drink. A pair of bulls following the herd start feeding on, on the vegetation very close to where the leopard is. They seem mildly anxious for a short while but eventually lose interest and feed peacefully on, on the russet bush willows and the, and the fever berries around the leopard. As the day wears on and the afternoon begins to cool somewhat, the leopard suddenly rouses himself. He perches himself up on a, 
large termite mound and scans the area around him for potential prey. Single spotted hyena started making its way out of the tree line towards where the leopard was. Yaina is visibly nervous. I can obviously pick up the scent of the leopard and doesn't know exactly where it is. Then she makes its way off and disappears off into the forest into the evening. of the rainforest on the island of Sumatra near Bukit Lawang late afternoon evening and we are exploring a beautiful cave system on the edge of the forest our first delicate encounter is with one of the many species of violin spider which are found in cave systems around the world. This is a very poisonous spider and potentially lethal. And as night falls, we find that we in turn are watched this is the katydid of the order Orthoptera, a little creature which has adapted so successfully to so many green leafy parts or environments on our earth. This little creature is a river toad, one of the species of Phrynoidus. It is nocturnal, this little amphibian, coming out at night onto the river bank, and especially on nights like this when the moon is full. The Seychelles group is home to 32 different species of crustaceans. And that's quite a lot. That includes land crabs and marsh crabs. This little beach is relatively small, but it's a real hive of activity as far as crustaceans go. The first little character was the hermit crab, and these are prolific here. And one can hear the rustling in the undergrowth as, as these little hermit crabs forage around for food. Despite having to haul around this massive burden relative to the size of the crab, they're incredibly agile. This individual had actually managed to haul itself up a tree trunk and it was perched precariously on a tiny little ledge. Just at the head of the beach, among the foraging hermit crabs were these two little lizards, hyper aware, obviously hunting little insects, flies and sand flies that are landing on the warm rocks in the evening. In the jumbled rocks, at the head of the beach once again, we found one of the species of ghost crab. A particularly dark in color almost purple or slaty grey and these individuals were out and about gleaning little tiny bits of food off washed up leaf litter and the dried seaweed that ends up on the beaches here. The other species of ghost crab that we found is the most bizarre looking creature.
they move around much closer to the water, searching for obviously the fresher bits of food that have washed up more recently. And so the sun went down eventually and it was too dark for us to shoot. And I'll bet this brought on a whole lot of action on this little beach. Join us next week for more fascinating flora and fauna from the stunning Seychelles Islands. <laughs>